the first time in my life I was having like the sex I always wanted to have and you know I always thought it was hard to have orgasms and turns out I was just sleeping with men. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lauren Berlinger, and this is The Hot Seat, and I'm here today with Elizabeth Kranz, who is an entrepreneur and jewelry designer, and we are going to get, be getting intimate for 45 minutes in the sauna, mm -hmm. hot, and hot. hot, hot, and then we're going to be doing the cold plunge. And I get to be super intimate with you today and learn about your history, which I'm so excited about because I didn't even know that you were a beauty queen. Yep. You were in the nightlife scene. <laughs> For a long time, yeah. Turned entrepreneur, and then just your interest in jewelry in college yeah. is so interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's been a, it's been a very windy, crazy road. Um, I went to school for silversmithing mm -hmm. to become a bench jeweler, um, but I also was studying history. A bench jeweler just bench, means mm -hmm. someone that makes jewelry? Right, yeah. Okay. I like manipulate metals and, you know, work with fire. And um, I mean, I, I think I, I dropped out after like one semester because oh, I was wow. just like so bored because I would finish all of my projects and be feel really inspired but then there were so many rules mm. you know so I dropped out and moved around a little bit but always kept my like my bench tools with me I started to get more into how jewelry has been made in the past mm. you know with my interest in history, in history right yeah. right and became inspired all the time yeah. And um, I think as soon as I got over my own um, like identity crisis mm -hmm. and was able to step into, I can do this. I am this. I don't need to feel inadequate because I haven't, I haven't done a lot of the the schooling or education that a lot of other entrepreneurs have done. Then it just kind of started to take off from there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that what you don't learn in school, you know, that you can't really be taught is that you have to trust your own intuition. Mm -hmm. And when you can really click into that, then, you know, everything is limitless. I remember one day I was like, you know what? I can't afford to have jewelry on my own, right? Yeah. So like, I don't have a thousand dollars. I don't have $5,000 to go out and buy jewelry and then sell it. So I came up with an idea. I was like, I'm gonna make a list of the five people like dealers on the street people who have jewelry and i'm gonna go up and i'm gonna ask them if i can borrow five pieces <laughs> on memo and then i'm gonna sell it and i was like for sure and i walk into the first person and i was like hi my name is elizabeth <laughs> and i'm starting a company and will you let me borrow like five? and they didn't even let me finish they were like no um, so yeah, i left sorry. and i was like that's fine <laughs> You didn't suggest like collateral, like I, I had no idea what to suggest. No foresight. No, no, like <laughs> nothing. I just was like, this is surely someone. This is such a great idea and brilliant. And there was one person, like one person, that was last on my list. And they were to the left before I, I got into the the subway station. And I thought, you know, what's well, one more kick in the tits? I'll mm -hmm. just go ask them yeah. too, you know. Yeah. And I walk up and I'm, you know, hi, my name's Liz. I start the spiel, and he goes, yeah, okay. Like, so just pick what you want and we'll write you up. And I remember being like, what? <laughs> and anyway, he, he let me borrow 10 pieces and that weekend I sold them all. And, and that's your business model that was, Yeah. <laughs> and so I walked back in on like Tuesday and I was like, I did it. <laughs> I sold the jewelry and everyone on, like, it's just like a long corridor. And I literally opened the door and I'm just like beaming, you know, right? exploding. Yeah. But then he like, let me take more and let me take more. And he was the first person to believe in me. Yep. And now, now I do have money to buy inventory if I want. You know, even recently, I just opened up my first retail mm -hmm. store. I got it's hot. <laughs> like, what's my name? No. Um, <laughs> just got the first wave of it. I'm like, where was I? How's the store doing right now? It's going really well. I mean, we've been we've been open for just um, you know maybe a month, I think, and it's really nice to have a place where people can come in and be excited for me and excited to be there and. Um, to like sit and share. But you're you know. so good at creating experiences. I love it. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like the people I, that come in and they shop with me, like, I feel like they're creating experiences for me too, you know? Yeah. Like, it's my dream job. Mm -hmm. It's on, pu purely on accident. It's my dream job. So good. And when I personally met you, I was introduced because we were both living upstate. Yeah. And we were both pregnant. Yes. At the time. Yeah. And scared shitless. And it's so funny because now seeing you as a mother, you are the epitome of a mother. 
Like I feel like you were born a mother. Yeah, she changed it's my life. It's so my natural daughter. for you. Yeah. All I want for her is to have a, a mother, a woman in her life who fights hard to live for herself, mm -hmm. you know, in like honesty and truth and being brave enough to make mistakes mm -hmm. and to sit in it. Mm -hmm. um, which is like something that before I had Henrietta, I, I, I wasn't doing. So do you feel like since having Henrietta allowed you to face a lot of your inner shadows, oh my God. inner thoughts that you've never been able to yeah. really hit on? Because when I first met you too, you were also had a very unconventional relationship. Mm -hmm. You were in a relationship with your husband at the time? Was husband he, at the time. Your husband and then yeah. also another woman. Right. Yeah, which and I <laughs> don't recommend. <laughs> I mean, it works for some, but uh, yeah, I yeah. just don't live with them at the same time. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I, well, I, um, yeah, I, I'm a lesbian and has since come out as lesbian. I've always been attracted to women and I knew that from, you know, early, early days. And I remember very young having that conversation with my mother and feeling very unseen and kind of brushed off. And you know, I, I was raised in a very Catholic family and it was completely dismissed. And I then I felt very insecure. So after that, for almost a decade, I was just with women in bathrooms, you know? Shit, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I also didn't feel confident enough to seek out spaces that would have been safe for me at the time. Um, like I remember one one time walking past the cubby hole and I, I was like, what? tonight's the night <laughs> I'm gonna get in there and I'm just gonna like meet women and like this is what's gonna like change everything for me and I walked in and I was shaking and I ordered a beer and I was so embarrassed by how much I was shaking I fucking left <laughs> you went by yourself I went by myself <laughs> and so I you know I had a, a relationship when I was with my husband because I was just so deeply like in need of, of female love when we got together, then it very quickly became all three of us, and I like was hitting the panic button like, all the time. So, um, when I left my marriage, and I I knew the guilt of that. How old was Henry at the time? Um, just over one, like one and a half, That's I think. So hard. Oh my yeah, God, I cannot imagine. it was devastating, and then I had to share time with her, and that that was devastating as well. But having to sit with myself and also like mourn you know, the the 15 years, the 20 years that I, I didn't feel in my body, mm -hmm. you know, and like mourning all of the time I slept with men because I just was waiting for something to feel right. So it was kind of like a, you know, I, I left and I felt liberated, but also terrified. Mm -hmm. And then you just, then you're just feeling like stuff is coming at you all the time mm -hmm. because not doing work, not going to therapy wasn't an option for me. I had to do it if I was going, going to not only survive, but to really seize a life that I want mm -hmm. um, because I want a big life. I want an exciting life. I want a full life and that doesn't happen until you can really love yourself. And I want that because I want that for my daughter as a woman. Mm -hmm. And then I met my, my partner, um, kind of on the same trajectory like broken heart yeah i mean broken heart but also empty. so liberated mm -hmm. not empty that then that's like that's like the really i think the important connection is like we met we don't fill things for each other we, so you did the work yeah and then felt liberated and whole because right. you had this relationship with yourself and mm -hmm. then found the love of your life boom yeah. yeah 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 so and still doing the work always doing the work but I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of who I was, even though like I have a lot of empathy for who I was and a lot of sorrow. But I'm also, yeah, I'm proud. It just feels really nice. Well, I find you truly inspiring, beautiful yeah, inside and out. Yeah. But how can people find you, follow you? The best place to find me and come spend time with me is on Instagram and it's the moon stoned with an ED. Um, so come spend time with me there. It's um, it's a good place to be. Come and rest and dream a little bit and look at really sparkly things. Yeah. And you'll find the most amazing pieces. I promise you that. <laughs> and here's the part where you're going to feel euphoric afterwards. Okay. The cold plunge. Woo! Okay. Three minutes in freezing cold. Okay. Hot and cold therapy by far is my favorite modality in self care right. and health and wellness. Okay. I know. I, I need to learn more self care from you. So I'm, I'm in.
You ready to do this? I'm ready. Oh, Jesus. Nice. Oh, <gasps> oh my God. So I always, how are you down so far <laughs> so fast? Because I get so high off the cold plunge that I, even though it's torture, I know how good I'm gonna feel. So, Is this meant to be relaxing for anyone? Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Kind of thing. Very fine point. Yeah. Good point. I did a home birth, a natural birth, but I was in labor for like 34 hours. So maybe I'm a long distance, not a sprinter. <laughs> <laughs> it is getting better, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you did so good. So. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay. Oh my god, I'm out of here. <laughs> you did awesome. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, The Hot Seat, and thank you to Elizabeth. And the cold seat. Yeah, and the cold seat. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's beautiful to catch up with you. I'm just here.